Hey, Dr. Aaron here, teaching universal law and spiritual truth, bringing fun to the shift in La La Land. And I'm so excited to introduce the ga today's guest, Tanya Memi. Hi, Tanya. How Hi, are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I had to say your name. I've been trying to practice it all day because I, I've known you for a while. It's a tongue twister. Truly. Well, you did a great job. <laughs> you did it perfect. Yes. So I am so excited because you've been a huge inspiration for Aww. me and for, I'm sure, millions of people out there because over the years we've watched you on Sell This House. Yes. And uh, I know a little bit of, of your backstory, but the intention today, because this is a spiritual conscious show, and I just feel like you have touched so many lives through helping them have a sacred space in their home without a ton of money. And I know that you're up to incredible things these days, but what I really wanted was to get into kind of a girl's kind of heart-to-heart -heart talk on I a conscious it. level, right? Yeah. Why not? Let's do it right here in Hollywood. You know, we need more <laughs> truth in today's world. So, oh, do we ever. Yeah. Do we ever. Yeah. So I want to know, like, if you're talking to your audience, because you have a lot of fans, mm -hmm. what is it that you really want them to know from a standpoint of, look, this is not just all, like, you didn't just, like, wake up every day and have everything happen. I'm sure you went through some trials and tribulations. Like, if you were to tell your guests one thing, like, what is it that you want them to know? What was the hardest thing you ever went through? Well, so, you know, oh my gosh, it's a, that's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah. one. one thing and um, one thing only. Put yeah. it on the spot, you know? No, I mean, <laughs> really, I am just like everybody else out there. I have the same problems. I've got the same worries, the same insecurities. Um, and, you know, people that I have met throughout all the shows I've done, I, I really, one thing that I know that I do is I care. I genuinely am interested in other people. Yeah. And I love the underdog. Mm. Um, although I've been around a ton and ton and ton of celebrities, my closest friends are not necessarily celebrities. Mm -hmm. um, I do. I love Hollywood, but I also have to take a break from it once in a while. So yeah, but wait, just wait. Like okay, I get like <laughs> this is the this is the you know Miss World Canada coming out. Like every time I see you, every time you're on a show, every time I see you interviewing, you're it's always about the other person. I saw you doing that show the little girl in Cambodia like I'm like this girl's amazing but I just like I want to know she struggles you know what I mean I want to know that sometimes you're like I give up I want to surrender for a minute like where where is that place for you um you know I'm I'm struggling right now I mean we're all struggling life is tough I, mm -hmm. I have I've always had my struggles I um I mean, it wasn't easy when to, to to start and get and get my first job in this business. I went on 250 commercial auditions. Um, I mean, I started off as Miss World Canada. Mm -hmm. Yes, I won that pageant. Mm -hmm. I worked really hard for that, not thinking I was ever going to win. Um, then I won, and then the pageant wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. And for personal reasons, I ended up giving up the crown six months before uh, I was supposed to. So I didn't get the opportunity to crown the next girl. But um, I was accepted into the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York. So I went there, which was my dream. And I knew that I wanted to be on television because eventually I wanted to be in front of hundreds of thousands of people's lives and make a difference in their lives. Now, whatever, I knew that at a very, very early age. Literally, I remember the time when I woke up and I was like, wow, I, I grew up on a sod farm. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the middle of nowhere. Like, we're talking on a dirt road, mm -hmm. corn stalks on one side, mm -hmm. my house on the other. We're like that younger generations. It's like, you know, the older generations, like, we had to, you know, walk 10 miles to and from school. <laughs> I, had <a> bike. <laughs> I had a bike. The millennials <laughs> are like, who are these women? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Star Search was the biggest thing that mm -hmm. you could ever do to get recognized. But mm -hmm. I mean, that's in Hollywood. How was I going to do that? So pageants to me were the only way to go to get some kind of recognition. And then mm -hmm. I ended up winning that. It was an amazing experience as well. And then I went to New York. And so I went from farm girl to like, I landed on, you know, 76 and Riverside. I'll never forget it. And um, I was there and that's where I sort of started my journey. But you know, after you win this giant pageant and you, I went to Sun City, South Africa and competed against 86 women and yeah. it was this like glamorous event. Mm -hmm. And then a few months later, I'm, you know, in New York City sweeping floors and trying to get whatever job I could because I was a student. So I'm, I was Canadian, yeah. am Canadian. Yeah. And I was a student, so it's like I had to just do whatever I could. I worked under the so table. Why did get... you give it up for six months before? Why did you give up your crown? Well, I, it was one of those things where the, the, the person who owned the rights to the pageant, 
it, it was a roller coaster of craziness where he mm -hmm. just sort of, I won and he took off and I didn't really, mm. um, I, I was entered into the Miss World pageant and they give you a list of about 45 things you have to have before you get there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is very expensive. And so the funding didn't really come through because he left. I, 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 he, yeah, yeah. I'm not even sure where he went and it was very confusing and um, it just wasn't as fulfilling, I guess. I wanted to take that and use it as a platform um, to give motivational speeches across mm -hmm. uh, North America, which is what I ended up doing anyways. Yeah. But I had to do it all on my own. So I didn't have enough money to buy my, you know, my, my, my costume. You have an international costume that you have to get. And I'm going up against these women from like Australia and Miss USA, oh and they have like hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. worth of a costume. I literally, this is where I started doing DIY. Was mm -hmm. I DIY'd my own <laughs> costume? <laughs> it was a white leotard with a red, um, it was a red leaf. Mm -hmm. I had red gloves with tassels, and I was the Canadian flag. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and it cost me all of like $30. To that pay. sounds good and scary at the same time, yeah, right? Yeah, it was great. I mean, it was an amazing experience, but it just, <laughs> I wasn't able to use it in a way because of, there were so many things that went on. It's not yep. even worth getting into. It happened a long time mm -hmm. ago, but I really wanted to go to New York. I got into the Ooh. school. I wanted to be a performer. I wanted to be in front of people's faces and then eventually work with, you know, women and kids and nice and just make nice. a difference. Nice. I didn't know how that was gonna happen, but mm -hmm. it was it was a tough road. Like I love that. I and went through a lot of struggles to make it happen. Such an epic, epic journey. I want to when we come back, so we have to take a little break, I wanna know like a few tips that you'd give people where like if you wake up in the morning and you go, Oh, I'm just kinda having one of those days, maybe you're PMSing, maybe some world event, the next world event's gone on, whatever that is. What is it that you do to get your mind right to say, I'm gonna get up anyway, I'm gonna go do it, and I'm gonna succeed and make a difference and serve others. So when we come back from the break, I want you to kind of share what you personally do, what your, you know, you can call it a daily spiritual practice, you sure. can call it getting your mindset, whatever it is, adjusting your attitude, okay? You got okay, it. Okay, we'll be right back, you guys. Stay tuned. Hey there, thanks for tuning in to The Dr. Aaron Show. I'm thrilled to be here on this journey together. And I wanted to say that if you like, share, and comment this community, it's very important as we go higher together. I also want to invite you to download my app on everything from iTunes to iHeartRadio to Google+. I know right here and right now that each day I want to be in your life for 11 minutes, seven days a week, 365 days a year. There's also 30 guided meditations on there, along with all kinds of goodies. So have a divine day, and may you live your truth. Hey, we're back with Tanya Memi. We're talking about tips that she uses each day when she wakes up, if she's having a hard day, what it is that she does to get her mind right and her attitude straight. So what is that? What do you do? Wow. Um, well, in the morning, um, if I do wake up on the wrong side of the bed, <laughs> which happens like never, no, <laughs> never, no, you know, for me, I'm the kind of person where I'm always in a good mood in the morning, no matter what's mm -hmm. going on. But mm -hmm. I think, you know, and it, it's, it's a choice. You choose to be to look at the glass half full or the glass half empty. I really yeah. believe that. Mm -hmm. um, I do things though where if I'm really derailed for some reason, if I've had an upset in my life that I'm having a hard time getting over, I, I will literally put on my cell phone and watch YouTube videos of people like Abraham Hicks or I love Abraham Hicks mm -hmm. and I listen to her all the time. She gets me back on mm -hmm. track again and she was introduced to me by my mom. I'll call my mom. You know, there's certain people in your life that Will, will give to you energetically and certain people that take away from you energetically. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know that because when you're around someone and you feel amazing by the time you're finished with that person, you, know, you feel like energized. Yeah, totally. Those are the people that you want in your life. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that I try to surround myself with. Yeah, completely. But if you're around someone and you're mm -hmm. feeling like tired, you're like, why am I so mm -hmm. tired? Why am I exhausted? Totally. Because I know? know that you've been through, you know, you've obviously had amazing childhood from what you say. And then, but you've gone through some hard things. You went through, um, you know, you quit the show, Home and Life. You got to tell us a little bit about that. You gave up your crown six months early. <laughs> and you did, you did become a U.S. citizen one year ago. But I also know that you've gone through divorce. You're a single yep. mom. So you've gone through some, you know, what people would consider, like, true, like, major things in life. So 
you know, that's not just waking up in the morning and having a rough day. You know, how have you, how, how have you, you know, have you just had a great support system? What is it that's been your biggest thing that's helped you through some of that? Well, it all starts with, I think, how you parent your children. And I come from, uh, my mom and dad are just, they've, my, they've given me so much confidence mm. and faith and love and support that, um, you know, no matter what, what I do or how life goes, it's, they're, they're just the backbone. And so if you support your kids and, mm. um, and you, you treat them as if they can do anything that they ever want to do in the world, which is what my, my mom and dad did for me, I think that you can sort of weather the punches that life brings. Mm. And um, yeah, for some reason I would say, you know, the biggest obstacle that I've had in my life is I draw in people that are abusive verbally verbally and emotionally abusive mm -hmm. so that's something that I've had to deal with throughout my life whether mm -hmm. it's somebody that I'm working with on a TV show whether it's an executive producer that is just you know causes me to quit mm -hmm. whether it's uh, I'm in a relationship for some reason that has been something that I've had to really deal with and I'm still dealing with it I'm still dealing with uh, not with I have chosen to get those people out of my life mm -hmm. but now I'm dealing with the effects of that so it's just uh, that's probably why you haven't seen me on TV in about mm -hmm. a year because I've you know my confidence was pretty much yeah, interesting it was yeah yeah it was definitely <laughs> I mean thanks for sharing and I do think that for women especially like it's one of our you know one of our things is codependency and you know I think that as we evolve and mature and step into being powerful women, empowered women, we have to learn to say no and, and, and get people out of our lives, which is a real challenging thing because we think we're supposed to love everybody. And yes, we are, but we're also supposed to put boundaries up. And I think it's a big, I think it's huge. And for you to have gone through that is a weird blessing in disguise because now you can be a voice for that and whatever. But I'm so curious because I, uh, I had really loving parents, and I have that we're all very healed and get along. Everyone's very healthy now, mm -hmm. but I didn't have that childhood that you have that you had. And I want you. To, I'm curious to know what are those principles. If you were to say, you know, what are those principles that your parents had that you would say, you know, do that for other people because not everybody came. Very few people probably came from, you know, a real good family life growing up. You know, my father always taught me to do the right thing and um my i don't come from my family my mom and dad they they don't lie they don't cheat they don't so i was raised in a family with very very high morals and very mm. high standards now when you're a kid you don't know the difference yeah. you just think that that's how life is supposed to work True. right mm -hmm. so depending on whatever you believe in whether it's karma or whether it's you know religion or whatever type of religion or you know what I mean or you believe in God or you believe in the universe or whatever that is for you um, you know it's deep down inside we all know what the right thing is to do mm -hmm. whether you follow the Ten Commandments or not it's true we mm -hmm. all know what's right and what's wrong mm -hmm. and my father taught me that but my mother also taught me spiritually and energetically what the right thing is to do so when I quit my TV show or when I left my relationship they were very very hard very devastating decisions that I had to make mm -hmm. but every single time including le le leaving uh, a relationship that I had it also like I, it's been sort of a thing where the hardest hardest decisions I've ever had to make in my life has always ended up yeah. in this most amazing blessing on the other side it's like you know what you need to do each of us have something in our lives right now that we know we need to do. Mm -hmm. We know the change that we need to make, but it's hard and it's fearful. Mm -hmm. But once you do it, and once you get on that other side, it's amazing. It's amazing yeah. the blessings that are on the other side. And it happens every time, but you have to do the work. Yep. It's like people in a relationship going, well, it's kind of, you know, I like them, but I don't. I'm going to see if I'm going to keep the door open, see if it, no. You got to close that door mm -hmm. and you have to open a new one. Great, great advice from, the woman we love so much. I just adore you. I think you're amazing, <laughs> amazing. You. So we have to take another break. But what I want to, when we come back, I want to hear about everything you're up to. Because I know you've got sure. some great philanthropy you're kind of up to. Yeah. And then also, I want to know what's happening, what's cutting edge in the world of kind of lifestyle. And I know you're up to some fun things. So ah. we're going to talk about that when we come back, okay? <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be back with all the goodie stuff. Hold on tight.
Dr. Aaron here, Doctor of Divinity, teaching universal laws and spiritual truth. And I am thrilled to announce the new show on Focus Television right here in West Hollywood, Los Angeles, California. Join us weekly as I interview incredible people, celebrities to your next door neighbor, you name it, your girlfriend. We're going to dive into such topics as love and relationships, health and vitality, business and money, and creative expression. And I'm thrilled to just go on this awakening journey with you as we tap into meditation, visioning processes, intuition, and all the above. So stay tuned as we do this together. And we're back in West Hollywood right here with this gorgeous, gorgeous single mother and uh, host, Odiva. Oh, I love so you, So that's Aaron. what we're going to talk <laughs> about right now. So I know that you, you've you always been a giver. You've always been a server. Every single time I've seen you on an interview, on, you know, KTLA, any of your shows, I've, I just, you have this giving sense to you. But I want you to talk a little bit about what you're up to today with Odiva and Tell me a little bit more about it, because I'm still learning about it, and so sure. what's going on with that? Oh, um, I want to bring the box out. Okay, so here's Let's the box. Let's bring the box. Yes, this is the this cool box. This cute little box. Boxes are like all the rave right now, There's, by the they're way. All, they're all the rave. So tell us a little bit about this box. So Odiva is, first of all, a uh, subscription-based company. So we deliver monthly essentials to your front door every month. Um, that way you don't have to have your boyfriend or your husband or yourself go out and get them. Okay, you mean... Tampax or whatever <laughs> brand essentials. Like maybe not everybody knows what essentials are. What are essentials? Like they are. Maybe they're condoms. Like we don't know what essentials all are. All of it. You can get it all. Oh really? The you can get yeah, that you too. Can get skincare. You can get. Okay, I didn't know that. And okay. the skincare, I actually help formulate. So it's they're they're it's a skincare line. Well, that look I've, at your face. So well, your thank skin you. is beautiful. So thank you. I'm trying. I'm 46 now. I gotta like <laughs> try harder. Um, <laughs> but. Beyond all of that, mm -hmm. it's really a company that is all about women helping women. And that's what my dream has always been, mm. to be a part and live the rest of my life um, giving back. There is so much, so much power in giving back. Yeah. And the more you give, it is very true, the more that you receive. Mm -hmm. And this company, I stand behind it because um, we are all about charity. We're all about, with every box we sell, we're giving a certain percentage to women in need. And inside every box, I'm not going to tell you what comes in it because we put all kinds of different free surprises in there too. So you're paying the same amount that you would pay oh, wow. if you go to the store, but there's fun free stuff just yeah. to, you know, make it a little more fun. Okay, so let me just like from like someone who's like, what are they talking about? So if I get this box, I can yeah. send it to somebody or I can send it to myself. Yes. And in the box, I can say, I want, you know, 20 pads this month. <laughs> yes, you can <laughs> Whatever it is that I got going on. And I'm going to have some surprises in with it. Is that Free kinda... surprises. Okay, so it's like a swag bag, but it's a box and it's got yes. you know, all sorts of things that you need. I love yes. that. Okay, great. But the, okay. the, the most important thing is we, we give back to charity and we're all about we're all about that mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I just got back from San Antonio mm -hmm, we're, we're doing a tour mm -hmm. and I'm talking about health and fitness and wellness and what happened was is I ended up doing an interview with uh, about 40 women and I asked them if they knew when that time when it was time to check their breasts for any kind of lumps or anything like yeah. that or when they ovulated so when I asked them the first question maybe one person knew the answer when I asked them that second question two people knew the no answer. idea so I realized I thought wow we need to really fill these boxes with information. So we're filling the website up with all kinds of information. Right. We're filling the boxes with information. And I'm so proud to say that we're launching a first period box. And this is for single oh. dads. Oh, it's that's for so single cute. Dad. I know. So oh. I can only imagine how uncomfortable it is to talk to your daughters about that, especially if you're a single dad. Yeah. Literally, you can order the box, give it to your daughter oh, at the right time. That's all so the information is, is in it. It's on the website. And so I'm in full support of uh, single dads and helping them over that. Program. I love that. I think like this is what makes you an extraordinary woman, in my opinion. And I watch this over and over again because we're doing an influencer series. And what I notice is that the people that are really doing well in any industry is because they've really networked. They're making a difference for other people. They're giving. And so I think that spiritually and consciously like this is what spirit demands like if you want to rise you've got to rise together we're not supposed to do it alone so i just want to really 
say thank you for all that work. And then I want to hear about what else you're up to because I know you're kind of, I mean, you're in Hollywood, you're obviously in the entertainment industry, but yet you're kind of on the cutting edge. So I want to know, I know you're up to a couple other things and where you see like lifestyle and industry going right now. <laughs> Well, right now, I mean, like you just said, it's very in to give back. Mm -hmm. But why is that? Because we need it. Mm -hmm. We need it. We all need it. We all need that little extra help. We all need that little extra inspiration. This is the way that I'm doing it. But, you know, you also have to walk the walk and talk the talk. So I'm not just going to sit here and say, I give back and the company gives back. No. I'm, I'm going, for example, I'm going to Guatemala in two weeks. Well, November 5th, I'm leaving. Um, I go there yearly with my dad and I help build schools and oh, yeah. houses and um, get kids involved and the communities involved. We build giant wells mm -hmm. and I've seen communities that have never, ever, ever had mm -hmm. clean water, mm -hmm. have clean water. Um, I, I'm passionately a part of that. I also, you know, did some work for World Vision as well and um, helped the video that you saw about the little girl in Jalapa, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she was my special case. So yeah. I found this girl, she had a skin disease. And so I, I send a nurse there every month to give her supplies and Aww. clean water. And, but I mean, it's, it's, but for me, I just know that when you give back for some reason, you also are taken care of. It's the law of the universe, right? What we reap, we it's, sow. You know, what yeah. we sow, we reap. You know, I'll get, it, I'll get it right one of these days. I don't know. Yeah, and so moving forward with that, um, you know, I'm not on a TV show right now for the first time in 20 years, but I'm spending a lot more time with my daughter, and I'm also able to really sit back and go, wow, what do I really want to do for this next chapter in my mm -hmm, life? Mm -hmm. Do I want a new, brand new TV show? Of course. But what's more important to me in the end, the end of the day, is that I know that I'm inspiring people. Mm -hmm. So I have a business partner. His name is Robert Ferguson. Nice. Um, he is a speaking guru. He's one of the top um, health and fitness mm -hmm. um, um, advocates in America. And he's got this whole diet-free life thing that I'm doing. His program, he's absolutely amazing. We've partnered and we're doing, a, we're doing something called the Live It event oh, great. in San Antonio. Okay, great. Where we're going to teach people how to live their best mm -hmm. it. And, and where can they happening. find Where can they find it? They find odeva.com? Yes. So, which is O-D-E-E-V-A.com. And then how do they find Live It? Do they just go to your website? Go to my website. We're putting it all together now. The first event is in January. So okay, you'll great. hear me talking about it if you mm -hmm. follow on my Facebook or any of my social media. I'm going to be definitely talking about it. But right now, yes, it's odeva.com. Okay. And it's E-E-V-A. Yay. <laughs> I know. It's hard to spell. <laughs> but what I know for sure is that here on Focus TV Network, that this is not traditional TV, it really is going towards media. And I yes. know that as we all come together, as we make a difference in the world, this is where the future is, in my opinion, for it sure. Is. So I'm so thrilled to just get to know you more as a girlfriend, and I really, really am so excited. I'm gonna order some boxes for sure. For I'm trying to think of all the young women, especially, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. it's a good, it's a fun one. It's kind of like one of those intimate things. It's I know fun. That. Uh, yeah. So anyway, on that note, I look forward to watching Live It, finding out more of what's going on and keeping the boxes and keeping us posted. Okay, you guys have a wonderful day. Stay tuned. Check out other things on Focus TV Network right here in West Hollywood. Have a divine day.